is or might be. All those other unspeakable things that we're trying to make sure we dissolve as peace ambassadors. So never let people get to that situation. When you notice something like that, when you notice something like that happening, you take care of that situation as early because trust me, you are the adult in the room at that time. Those other people, they are not there. They are like children. You are babysitting. You are trying to make sure they reason together. But if you don't spot the signs, if you don't look at the reasons, if you don't look at the differences they have, weigh them and decide on their behalf before making them see the reason that you're seeing also. That situation will escalate. And it will escalate from bad to worse. And you'll have failed as a peace ambassador. You will have failed from looking at the reasons. Because dialogue is the only way of us curtailing war. Dialogue is the only way. What happened in post-207? What happened in post-207 should never have happened. It should never have happened. Had we had people who are dialogue oriented, when the dialogue come, dialogue came months after people had died. Months, days after people had suffered, after people had been virtually ejected from their homes, their homes burned, spears, after all that, that is when dialogue came. But what if dialogue could have come before? What if someone could have foreseen what was happening? What if someone could have made sure that we don't go to that level? Maybe the over 2,000 Kenyans we lost that time will still be alive today. Could they have made a difference in the economy? Yes. Could Kenya be different right now? Yes. Could our history be different right now? Of course, yes. We will not be referring to this. We will not be deferring to the other time we were in Eldoret. I think it was last year, but one at uh, when you were now, what's that ground called? Yeah. Kiamba. That Kiamba Church. We know the story of Kiamba Church. Some of us, anyway. When we were there, we were being explained by some of the residents around. By the it's a very deserted place, even up to now. We were being explained by some of the residents around that time. That church was burned down. And the reason as to why it was burnt down, it was because it was holding people. Specifically, it was holding Kikuyus. LD at that time was an audience zone, right? All the Kikuyus who were at that time then, there, it was problematic for you to be there. So, some of them went to sought refuge in this church. Most of them, the priest said, they, they relaxed. Then, some crazy people from outside came and bolted the doors, wakafunga, wakachukua mtungi ya mafta, wakawasha, na wakatupa ndaniyo kanisa, with people inside. They burned down. And you know, they've done that, and they're standing outside to make sure no one leaves. They're standing outside, kwa mlango, kwa madirisha, waiting, and wanaweta kuwa na hiyo kanisa imechomeka yote, so that nobody leaves. Something that even touched my mind a little bit, even more, is someone was telling us, there was about a four-year kid who was inside there. And her mother, actually one year, and her mother found a way You know what happened? These guys took that kid and threw her back inside. Now, Kafunga. How do we descend to such levels of inhumanity? Because of two people we don't even know personal. Now that should never have happened. These stories, we are not supposed to tell them. Why? Because dialogue should have been there. Dialogue should have been prioritized. Dialogue should have been taken seriously. Had we done that then, this child right now will probably be in class eight. His mother will be waiting Wondering about this year, ninatoa wapi pesa ya kumpeleka form 1 next year. Enjoying, looking at her child run around the house. That is what would have happened had we prioritized the dialogue. So, never at a time should we let people we are trying to put together 
and have the same thinking. Leave the table. As a peace ambassador, your job is only done when the two sides are in agreement. Your job is only done when you have people thinking the same. Your job is only done when you are sure the potential of conflict has been reduced to less than 0%. That is when you leave. Because I can tell you this, when you leave or you let them leave before they see eye to eye, anything that happens after that, it's on your conscience. You're the reason as to why those people are killing each other. Why? Because you did not help in bringing them together. You're the reason those people are fighting at that time. Because you did not curtail that situation. You left them go. You did not spot a sign. So the responsibility we are trying to carry as of now, as of this journey we are starting, is not a small responsibility. It is something that we are supposed to make sure we take seriously. It's something that we're supposed to make sure we use. It's something that we're supposed to make sure we don't just let go. Because in any conflict situations, we are the pH, we are the point zero. We don't bring them to our point, we fail. Dialogue and education for peace can help free our hearts from the impacts towards intolerance and the rejection of others. Dialogue and education for peace can help free our hearts from the impulse towards intolerance and the rejection of others. Teaching people that dialogue is important, especially in sources of conflict, in places of conflict, is the most important job that you have. Because they will only let you arbitrate between them when they know and they believe in your process. If they don't believe in dialogue, then there's nothing you're doing there. Because they'll be wondering, who you see a Malaysia talking? They will not believe in the process. You need to make them believe in dialogue. You need to make them want to be at the table. You need to make them realize what they will be going towards when they leave that dialoguing table. That is the part of education. That is the part of the civil education, the small civil interrogations you give them. You make them realize your point. You put them in your shoes and you refer scenarios that have gone far worse when dialogue was not considered. Because dialogue itself is the single most important thing in any scenario. When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may just learn something new. Are we getting the point of that? When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But when you listen, you just might learn something new. What am I trying to say here? What am I trying to help you realize so that you help others realize? You are trying to help you realize that when you are alone, it is you. But when you think of others, you are now together. You learn something new. You add something on top. When you are, this is on one side, now you are on the other side. You're fighting. Everybody is fighting for himself. But when you come together, aren't you stronger? When you start fighting together in unison, Pamoja, aren't you fighting for something better? Don't you have a better chance of succeeding when you're together? That is what I'm trying to tell you. That is what you're supposed to make these people realize. A benefit of doubt never hurt anybody. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. And this happens a lot in times of dialoguing or in times of conflict resolution. People listen with the intent to reply. 